could 3D printing be part of the future of filmmaking equipment? Well, a company called Edelkrone seems to think so with this, a 3D printable version of one of their most successful products. But you have to ask the question, is this even viable in such a demanding environment as filmmaking? Well, let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So this is part of Edelkrone's new Autac line of 3D printable filmmaking gear. And it's a variation of their hugely successful Flex Tilt Head version 2. They reached out to me and asked if I was interested in showcasing this product and I said yes, but only if you send me the original, this one, to compare it to. So looking at them side by side, they look kind of similar and I thought initially that this company maybe had just taken the CAD files of the metal version. This is quite heavy, all metal, all aluminium, and just made them 3D printable. But I was quite surprised and happy to discover that some significant redesigning has gone into remaking this for 3D printing on your regular everyday FDM slash FFF 3D printer. So what's the idea here? Well, this isn't fully 3D printed. It's actually a kit of metal components that come and then you 3D print the, the bulk of the parts that would normally be heavy metal during the shipping process. You buy the parts which are listed for $29 US currently and then you 3D print the rest and assemble it into your own little flex tilt head 3D. I was really happy to see that they haven't just provided STL files for 3D printing. In fact, the company provided SolidWorks models and step models. Now, not everyone's gonna have SolidWorks. If you're in an engineering or high-end design field, you might have access to it, but dot .step is actually quite universal and it's more useful than STL files for remodeling and modifying these files if you wanted to. So for example, with Fusion 360, I use that quite a lot on the channel. You could load those step files in and then directly start remodeling on them. So that's something I'm gonna explore at the end of this video. You know, could you modify this? Whether or not uh, Edelkrone intends that, it would be possible using these files. They do list that their tested and approved 3D printers are the Ultimaker S5, Ultimaker 3, and Zax 3D printer, which I'm not too familiar with, but I don't have those. And they do have a list of recommended print settings. Basically, this is gonna be holding a lot of weight. I mean, the real version, real version, the fully assembled one is metal and it's very, very sturdy and quite heavy. So we're gonna to wanna to print this with a high infill. I used my Up Mini 2 with ABS filament and I printed it with the highest infill possible in Up Studio. Uh, unfortunately, you still cannot change the perimeters so there's only two perimeters in this with Up Studio, but if you're printing this on another machine, I would definitely increase the number of perimeters because that makes your part far stronger. I just settled with a very, very high infill and this is printed, as I said, in ABS. And in fact, this ABS cost me $7 Australian for one kilo. So already we're starting to see some significant cost savings over the original metal version. And it's actually a lot lighter as well. I mean, it's very high density, but it's still plastic. It's not metal in construction. This is a kit product. So once you 3D print the parts and you have the parts provided from Edelkrone, you need to assemble it. And they do provide very, very good instructions for doing so. As I said, there is variations between the two versions, but it goes together very, very easily. And the whole concept is these high friction joints that you sort of force into position and the product can kind of come out and you can loosen or tighten these as required. Um, and the idea is that the weight of the camera shouldn't exceed the friction. So I'm pushing quite hard on that. We're going to see how much weight this actually can handle. But first impressions, I'm actually very impressed with how much strength this has. Uh, I was very skeptical that the 3D printed plastic would just be way too weak, but it's actually fairly rigid. I mean, we are comparing this to the full metal version and it's actually pretty good. I will say in terms of the designer, they had a very difficult job of making some of these parts print without support material um, and print with the best layer bonding and strength for um, in terms of the, the orientation. But this part here, it dips in, that's gonna be a bit of a weak point. And the top part where the camera actually mounts, it's two halves that slot together and there's no real way of securing them apart from this sticky pad. I don't think that's the best approach, but to be fair to the person who designed this, I can't think of a better way to do this without needing support materials or additional fasteners. So they've done overall a really good job of this, but you will need good tolerances on top of having a 
very high infill 3D print to get the strength required. Do not print this with low infill, otherwise your precious camera will probably go tumbling to the floor. When you compare it to the full metal version of the Flex Tilt Head 2, you can see that you are losing out on a few creature comforts like the little bubble level, for example, if that's important to you. And this thing does come assembled from the factory and it's already tensioned perfectly. Still takes a lot of force to open and close, um, but you can, and you can still adjust it, but it's pretty much ready to go out of the box. But you do pay a hefty price premium. This is valued at $149 US versus the parts for this that were $29 US. So how about the moment you've all been waiting for? Can this actually hold a camera's weight and is it usable in a regular environment? Well, for me, this would be useful for filming B-roll, that sort of thing, so I can move it around to different angles and such. And uh, I'm gonna have to film with my camera phone because I'll be mounting my camera onto this. The uh, I always find the, the paradox of filming filmmaking equipment is just kind of amusing. Anyway, let's move over to that and see how we go. So let's kick things off with the Flex Tilt Head 2, the all metal version. I'm mounting my little Panasonic G7 here and as you would expect, it holds it perfectly to the tripod. Uh, it's nice and rigid, you can rotate it, you can also tilt down. And there's lots of degrees of movement. Uh, keep in mind the tripod's on a carpet here, so it is a little bit wobbly. That's just because it's on carpet, but Overall, I'm really happy with how it holds it in place, and I can definitely see myself using this for a lot of B-roll shots. But how does the 3D printed version fare? Well, I couldn't get the base to rotate properly unless I made it very loose, in which case it would kind of wobble a bit. But I don't really need that because the tripod head can rotate. I'm really only caring about that whole tilting aspect to it to get, help me get better overhead shots. And to my surprise, once you attach the camera, it's actually almost as rigid as the metal version. There is, there is some flex to it because of the plastic and a little bit more bounce than the aluminium part. But overall, I am pretty stoked with this. You could easily use this day to day with a nice light camera like the Panasonic G7 or another similar Micro Four Thirds system. But you might be wondering how much weight can you put on this? And well, I have the perfect lens for that. This is my humongous one to 400 millimeter zoom lens telephoto. It's nuts, it's huge on a, on a micro four thirds and it adds a substantial amount of weight. And I was really not expecting this to hold. I'm very tentative about it, but it kind of does, but only in some orientations. When you push it past a certain point, because it's so far cantilevered, it all just takes over and falls down. So if you wanted to use a lens this large or a heavier camera body, you would have to fully tighten up the joints, which means you can't move them. So you're gonna have to move into position, then lock it up to use something heavier like this lens and camera combo. And to be fair, I tested the same lens and camera combo on the metal version of the Flex Tilt Head. Even though it does hold this huge lens a little bit better, it still suffers the same issue where if it gets past a certain tipping point, it will just slowly fall down. On the website, it does say both systems can hold up to two and a half kilograms of weight, but I really wouldn't push it that far. This is already showing the limitations of the design. I would stick with a nice light lens and camera body to get the most out of it. So there you have it. You can hold quite a bit of weight on this device with it um, tensioned up. But if you fully tighten it, obviously it's not gonna to wanna to move in terms of packing it away for storage. So that's a bit of a trade-off, uh, getting the right tension on this versus the ready to run metal product where you can not really have to worry, it's ready to go out of the box. A little bit more work goes into this, but the, the price saving is significant. Now let's talk about whether or not this is the future of filmmaking gear, or let's say any industry where you have very unique specific objects for specific tasks where mass production might not be suitable. In terms of price, $29 US for the metal parts means this is cheap, but it only means it's cheap if you have a 3D printer to print those parts. So for example, the Up Mini 2 that printed these parts in ABS plastic is valued at around $800 US. How many of these would you have to print to pay that off? Quite a few. But at the same time, the filament was only $7 a kilo Australian, which is like $5 US a kilo of plastic. 
And uh, that's very cheap, unusually cheap for filament. But even then, this only uses a few dollars of filament, even at high infill. That is pretty crazy when you consider the fact that the parts were 29 US and maybe a few dollars of filament, you are well under the price of the metal version by several multiples. But then again, it's plastic, not metal. It comes as a kit, not ready to run. And there's always a discussion about the emissions and the transport costs. So this is heavier. It costs more to ship in terms of emissions and cost, but the filament had to be shipped to me as well. I know someone on Twitter raised that point. It is a good point. The filament had to be shipped to me. Therefore, the emissions have already been spent, if you like, doing that. But what do I think? Well, I don't see this sort of thing as the next industrial revolution. It's not going to change the world in terms of how we're set up currently with manufacturing and mass production and, you know, well-established distribution and shipping and all that. But for bespoke use, for very niche use, like this tilt head, I think it's a perfect fit. With 3D printers becoming more easy to use and more available and lower cost, which is what I always try to push here on the channel, this kind of thing makes a lot of sense. Especially using those step files, if we take this top part, which I'm not too happy with, and we modify it. For example, we can modify it to actually slot in to a quick release of a camera tripod ball head or something like that. Or perhaps we can modify it to just hold a, a light or just a different connector or a microphone. To me, that's the real power of 3D printing. And here on Makers Muse is always my aim to empower your creativity with technology. And this product is a really, really good step forward. So a big thanks to Edelkrone for sending this out to me free of charge to talk about it. They didn't ask for anything specifically. So this is my, my own take on this sort of product. And I do think it's very brave of them doing this sort of thing because uh, undoubtedly there'll be people out there who print ones that aren't to spec and their cameras will fall. And uh, that's not Edelkrone's fault, but they'll sure make a stink about it. So make sure you print these properly using the recommended settings. And if you did enjoy this video, I'd love to have you subscribe to Makers Muse. I do have my selfie stick for my DJI Osmo Pocket video coming very shortly. That's another 3D printed camera gear video. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.